Okay, so, sorry about that. So this is gonna be kind of the mother of all reviews for me. Um, I've done a lot of videos to date on a lot of different things, on range, on tires, on hills, um, comfort, seat, you know, on and on and on. So today I'm gonna kind of review everything. So let's get to it. Let me just switch to my view of my review. Okay, and at the end, I'm gonna give you my overall review out of 10, it'll be a percentage. Um, and then I'm gonna tell you how you can get your percentage up higher, okay? So, what else is for, okay. So, tires. I, and each, each criteria I'm gonna rate on uh, one to 10. And then at the end, I'll total it up and average. So, tires. Um, as many of you know, I have the all-terrain tires now. But let's get, let's get back to the Badger tires, BDGR, which is kind of funny. Um, the Badger tires are cool, they're fun, they're cool looking, um, but you know, there's only limited traction in off-road. They're really bad in grass when you're trying to ride across fields and stuff. Um, they were cool, I liked them, but for me, uh, I got a flat tire and that prompted me to put on these all-terrains that I had from Super 73. You know, the 20 inch by four inch and um, just so much better I mean watch one of my other videos to my all-terrain tires video to, to learn all about them but just so much better you don't feel any different on the street it's not like they're uncomfortable because they've got the knobbies and they're um, much better in grass much better in, in uh, dirt and so overall for the Badgers I give them an 8 out of 10 an 8 for suspension the front and rear suspension um, really comfortable, really impressive. I really like it. Uh, I give it a 10. Honestly, I've, I've had a bunch of front, you know, hard, hard tails, front suspension only bikes. And, you know, this one just so much more, so much more bounce and, and leeway in terms of, you know, your, your travel on the springs. And it's just so comfortable regardless of what you're going through. So suspension at 10. Seat. I knew this was going to be a problem when I bought it. I don't like that it goes up. The, the last third of, of, the, of the seat has like this bump that goes up. I don't like that. You can't really sit on it. It's too small. You feel like you're kind of you know, sitting on the top of a, you know, a ballpoint of a pen and you kind of wobble all over the place. So you really only have two thirds of the seat anyway. And it's not very cushiony. And after 30 minutes without you know, padded bike shorts, your butt hurts. So I bought a new seat. For those that don't know which one, if you go on Etsy and you type in Super 73 seat, it's the one that's like brown and then not lengthwise but crosswise, it has a white stripe through it. And this seat, whether you're wearing seat shorts, you know, bike shorts with the padding or um, just regular street clothes, it's so comfortable. And it's longer, so you can kind of uh, you know, sit back farther, especially for bigger guys up to six foot. It just helps me to be able to sit back farther. Um, I'm gonna take a sip here real quick. All right. So seat, I give a five. I don't know if you were expecting that, but that's what I give. Handling, forget about tires and all that. Just its overall, you know, ability to kind of go around turns fast. Um, you know, the, the overall stability. You know, the bike as a platform, if you will. Really good. I really, really, really like it. It's perhaps because of the wide tires and the stability, it's probably the easiest bike in the world to pedal with um, no hands. You know, I'm like riding with no hands right now on the middle of a busy street and it's no problem. So you no hands. So handling, I give it 10. Speed, uh, overall, and I'm gonna break down the pedal assist levels and all that. But overall, I give it a 10. Um, I really like that it goes 31 miles an hour. I think that's definitely like, high end of industry standard on, on, on bikes. Um, it gets you going, uh, you know, it gets you going at a really fast clip, you know, and even the, the 20 miles an hour on the mode one is actually pretty good. That's what I'm doing right now, actually. Um, so overall on the uh, speed, I give it a 10. On torque, keep in mind that Super 73 promises on their app, they're gonna give us firmware updates. Um, and we're gonna get better torque, they promise. Um, torque, off the line, like from a, from a dead stop on flat ground, on you know pavement, street, it's fine. 
I would give it a six. Um, I've got a mid-drive motor one, and if I'm in low gear, man, the freaking torque is amazing. So I don't know if it's the hub motor, I don't know what it is, but it doesn't have great torque. And when you're in anything other than street, you're in grass, you're in dirt, you're in rocks, you're on pavement, you're on a fire road, you're on a trail, it's not that great. You know, you almost feel like you want to pedal a little bit just to get it going. And that's in throttle or pedal assist. Just not tremendous torque. I really wish it would be able to like pop a wheelie out of the, you know, out from a dead stop. And I feel like with the size motor it has and it's a hub motor, it should be able to do that. So hopefully the firmware updates really help. So torque, I give it a six. Overall comfort, this is kind of a loaded one because it's, am I talking about the tires? Am I talking about the seat? Just overall in general, even before I got my new seat, overall comfort, especially your thirst, first 30 minutes, it's pretty good. I like it, it's comfortable. And the, the, the big tires help. Um, and you know, it's a, big, it's a big enough size bike for bigger guys and it's small enough for smaller guys. So, or women as well. I give it an eight in terms of comfort. Okay, now we're gonna talk about pedal assist and I'm gonna kind of break it down by uh, you know, pedal assist mode. And for those of you that have watched some of my videos, I recently did a pedal assist video, so go check it out. All right, in mode one, pedal assist one, worthless. Absolutely worthless, you get basically nothing. Unless you're like going downhill on, you know, pavement, and, you know, you're not gonna barely move. You have to pedal really hard. And it really gives you almost no support. Pedal assist two, um, a little bit more. It's almost like a little girl is pushing you on her tricycle. So you get a teeny boost, but not much. Pedal assist three is pretty decent. It takes a little while to get you going. If you're in anything other than street, you know, it, you gotta pedal a little bit to really get going. And then once you get to about five miles an hour, you kind of take off. Um, pedal assist four is pretty cool. You know, again, it doesn't have the greatest torque, but you know, a couple little strokes of the crank and you know, you're going at a really fast clip and it, it accelerates pretty quickly. And actually, you know, I told you this is mode one. Mode four is the exact same thing. It's just your top speed is higher. So in um, pedal assist four, on mode four, you go up to 30, 30 instead of 20. So pedal assist is actually the exact same in one or four. Two and three modes are kind of just, you know, I don't really even consider those important because one of them's throttle only, only up to like 28 miles. Why wouldn't you just want pedal assist, cap it at 20, that's mode one, or throttle and pedal assist, you know, full out unlimited mode four. So if you're interested in mode two and three, don't really worry about it. I don't think you're really gonna fuss with it much. And unfortunately for this video, I'm not really gonna talk about it. So pedal assist one, I give it a one out of 10. Pedal assist two, I give it a three. Pedal assist four, excuse me, pedal assist three, I give it a seven. And pedal assist four, I give it a 10. So one is a one, two is a three, three is a seven, and four is a 10. Um, whether you're in pedal, you're in mode one or mode four, doesn't matter. Throttle, pretty cool. I mean, it just kind of takes off. Again, not the greatest torque, but you know, it, it's pretty cool. I like that you can, at any point, even if you're in pedal assist mode, um, you, when you're in like mode three or four and you're in pedaling, you can also just hit the throttle and you can go. Uh, it just kind of takes over and it's pretty cool, you know? <clears throat> so I like that. Um, so throttle overall, um, I give it a 10. Okay, hills. With momentum, whether you're in mode one or mode four and you're pedaling, um, not tremendous pedaling, just kind of like air pedaling, you know what I mean? Not really advancing the bike with your pedaling, just kind of air pedaling. With, mo with hills, or on hills with momentum, like a decent sized hill, at least four or five degrees. With momentum, I give it a 10. I've gone up like a eight degree hill and I was going 23 miles an hour. I have, actually have a video about that. Um, and you know, I've actually even gone 26 miles an hour up a pretty steep hill. Just really impressive. It's got a lot of torque in the higher end anyway, and a lot of pull and it really just kind of takes you and it's really freaking impressive. Without, so I give, with momentum, I give it a 10. Without momentum, you know, take a look at my uh, Tarantula Hill video. Take a look at my 11 Hills, you know, testing video. Without 
momentum, you're kind of screwed. You're really pedaling hard, and until you pedal it to like eight or nine miles an hour, it's not gonna take off and it's not gonna get you up the hill. So you really gotta pedal, which is a shame. So without momentum, I give this a three on hills. So if you're going up a two degree hill, you're probably okay even without momentum, but anything above a two or three degrees, you're screwed. Um, here I am going up like a three degree slope, but I have some momentum and I'm doing fine. I'm going 20 miles an hour, you know? Mode one, actually. Okay. So parts quality. Overall parts quality from the hand grips to the brakes to the to the, 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 the pedal cranks to the engine to the welds on the frame uh, to the display to the battery. You know, overall, you just feel like you're riding like a really quality machine. You know, it's just very high end, feels very good quality. Um, and I'm just really impressed with that. And I give that a 10. Parts quality, I give it 10. Um, and then, you know, even the seat, I don't like it, but it's still real good quality. I mean, it's very well done. It's, you know, very well stitched. It's not gonna just rip on you. So, you know, overall quality, a 10 on everything. And I hope I'm not uh, jinxing myself, but anyway. Um, frame quality, I kind of talked about that. I give that a 10 as well. I mean, just the welds are really top notch. The bike is really durable. It's really strong. It's really thick uh, and it's just really well done. You feel like you're riding a Mercedes, you know? So frame quality, a 10. Aesthetics, you know, again, it depends on the, you know, if you get an RX and you get a different color, you get an S2, whatever. But the green, first of all, is my favorite color. But overall, just the style of the bike, the look and feel of the bike. Um, I like that you can push the handlebars forward, it makes it look cooler. And just overall, it's really streamlined. It looks like a motorcycle. It's really badass looking. So aesthetics, I give it a 10. No question. Okay, terrain. And I've done some videos on terrain. Go back and look at those videos if you want specifics. In terms of street, this thing is a pavement princess. It's badass. You know, it's a street ninja. It's gonna get you anywhere you wanna go. It's freaking brilliant, especially if you have momentum going up hills. I give it a 10 on street. On dirt, again, I'm just gonna, I'm basing everything on the Badger tires right now. Um, and the original seat. So in dirt, um, I give it an eight, pretty good. You know, it's got traction going up hills and all that. And again, with momentum, you can get up hills. Pretty good carving capabilities. I've done some good videos on that, but you know, you do slip a little bit if you're going kind of faster on a turn, especially if the dirt is anything but really hard packed. So in dirt, I give it an eight. In terms of water, and I actually did on one of my, alter I did an all-terrain testing video and I actually went through some water. In terms of water, I'm not talking like, you know, going through a freaking swimming pool or something or a lake, but you know, I went through like a, a little bit of water with some rocks, you know, about six or eight inches of water and it actually pulled me through. I was very surprised, so very cool. So overall, granted I haven't tested it extensively, but overall I would give water an eight. Not that many of you are gonna face any bark or mulch, but a lot of the parks around here have it. And so I rode through it. Um, you can actually see some over here kind of. Anyway, I rode through that um, and it's very surprising. It actually does pretty well and it's got pretty good capabilities. Again, because it's got the Badgers, not the greatest traction. So unfortunately, because of the Badgers, I'm having to give it a seven. Uh, grass, um, not the greatest, honestly. You feel a little wobbly. It doesn't feel as sturdy as normal. Um, you feel like you could tip. It doesn't have very good, you know, turning, carving capabilities. Um, I wasn't impressed at all with grass. And, you know, when I had the Badger tires, I was really kind of disappointed. So I give grass a six. In terms of sand and you know one of some of my videos i tried going through sand you know some some not as deep sand you know like playground sand and then i tried to go through some deeper sand that was like a volleyball pit sand um it doesn't do sand very well at all and frankly the badger tires just really suck in sand so and overall it just doesn't have the power to pull you through you're really wobbly you're gonna go like three feet and fall so sand i give it a three um, in terms of handle grips, you can see the handle grips. They're really cool looking. There's not a lot of cushion to them. They're kind of hard. You can push them in like a teeny, teeny, teeny bit. It's a teeny bit of cushion. But overall, they're just not the most comfortable things in the world. But you grip them really tight, you know? 
I don't have any complaints against them. They're just not the greatest in the world. So handle grips, I give a seven. I would definitely consider getting new grips. I don't really like the ones that Super 73 offers, but you can probably get ones aftermarket just about anywhere. So handle grips, a seven. In terms of range, in mode one, you can see I'm in mode one because I like mode one because of the range. You can just air pedal in mode one. You only go 20 miles an hour on flat ground, but you air pedal and you get a lot more mileage. You probably get closer to 32, 33 miles in mode one. Pedal assist four even, you know, going, you know, uh, 20 miles an hour. Um, so I give mode one, on, uh, on range, I give it a uh, nine. Mode one, excuse me, mode four, pedal assist, you know, especially pedal assist four. Um, I give it an eight. I was thinking seven, but you know, the average mountain bike of this, mountain bike, uh, electric bike of this sort, you're not really truly, unless you're really pedaling, you're not gonna get more than 20, 25 miles. The fact that we can pretty, pretty much get maybe 28 miles or so, 30 max, um, on mostly throttle with a little pedal, um, pedal assist four in mode four, you know, I give it an eight, an eight. And I wish it had a teeny bit more battery, but overall, you know, pretty impressive. I have a, a mountain bike, um, electric bike that's got a mid-drive, it's got a smaller battery, and it goes like 20 miles before I'm really struggling. So, you know, this thing's better. Um, so, range, an eight. One quick word on range. Once you're down to about 4%, or yeah, it says like four, excuse me, four miles or five miles left on the battery, you're pretty much done. So when it says eight miles left, you really got to start reserving because if you're already going to degrade in your power output, you can only go maybe 26 miles an hour instead of 30. Off the line is slower. So it definitely degrades over time. Uh, just, you know, just something to consider. So mode one and nine, mode four and eight. The fun factor. I mean, I got to tell you, the fun factor on this thing is a 10 all day long. I mean, this thing's a freaking blast. I have so much fun. I've had like 11 motorcycles. I've had a bunch of different mountain bikes. I ride a road bike. Um, this thing is just fun, you know? The, most, the best thing I can equate it to is this 200cc TW200 Yamaha, <coughs> excuse me, motorcycle that I had that had big knobby tires and a big thick tire in the back. And it was a dual sport. And I could go just as seamlessly on the grass as I could on the dirt as the street. This thing's a dual sport. It really is. I mean, you can very easily, even with the Badgers, go on just about any terrain you want. You know, you're gonna have a little bit better time in some terrains than others, like I've said, but it's a dual sport, you know? Um, I've seen people on the S, not the S ones, the Z ones go off road and all that. You got street tires, they're slicks. You probably don't have the best, you know, carbon capabilities, but they even do it on that. But so this one with the, the Badger and the, the more power, you know, you can pretty much go anywhere. So fun factor, 10 all day long. Top speed, um, I'm 210 pounds about. I'm six foot in throttle only. I can go about 31 miles an hour, which is pretty cool. I've heard people go anywhere from 28 to about 33. Uh, I'll take 31 all day long. I was thinking it was only gonna be 28 or 29 given my weight, but I can go 31 and it's freaking badass and I love it. So top speed, I give it a 10. In terms of size, I kind of talked about it before. Overall size, you know, compared to that Z1, which just looks like if you're anything over 5'10", your, your knees are almost hitting the steering wheel or handlebars can't sit back very far, your legs are kind of crunched. This one, pretty cool. I mean, even especially with the new seat, you can sit back farther. But overall, even with the, the stock seat, still plenty of room. My neighbor who's 6'5", if you look at that video, it's about, it's called 82 year old ride Super 73. He's 6'5", he rode it. Looked a little bit funny because he's so big, but he said it was comfortable and it was fine and he liked it. So even at 6'5", you can freaking ride this thing. Um, and it, it's six foot for me. It's freaking brilliant. I absolutely love it. I feel like I could, e I could easily be taller and be fine. So size, I give it a ten. Um, I wanted to kind of bundle together all the different, um, you know, terrains into just kind of a traction overall traction category. Um, I gave you the breakdown of the different terrains, but in terms of traction overall, with the Badgers and the stability, and you know, I give it a seven. Not bad, you know. I bet some mountain bikes with, you know, more knobby tires, electric mountain bikes with knobby tires can probably get better traction. Certainly with mild terrain tires, I have better traction. So 
So with the Badgers overall, I give it a seven. Okay, so now, believe it or not, that was actually 30 criteria, I believe. So now, I added all those up, and then I divided by the number, or I think that's 31 criteria. And then I divided by the number of criteria, and I came out, came out with an 8.12, 8.12 8 out of 10, or an 81% out of 100, however you want to look at it. So not bad, you know, a B, B minus, not bad at all. Um, if you, now, here's how you can get this thing to an 8.93. From an 8.12 to an 8.93, in my opinion. You spend 150, 60 bucks, and you get the better seat. You look on Etsy, any of those seem to be better seats. Um, get a better seat with more comfort, especially if you're not riding with um, bike shorts and a padding, and you can sit back further. It just makes it a much more comfortable ride and you don't really feel the bumps. It's just better overall. So I would get the seat for 160 bucks, 150 bucks, and I would get the all-terrain tires. Now the all-terrain tires were not expensive. I think they were $40 for both, maybe 40 for one. I don't know, go check. But if you go into the parts section on the Super 73 website, uh, it's the all-terrain tires. They might be out of them right now, but they're kind of knobby. They're not like full dirt, but they're, they're knobby enough and you get the right traction, you're not uncomfortable on the road, and you're doing dirt, you're just a hell of a lot better, way better in grass. And so just to give you an idea, if I go back through some of these criteria, the all-terrains, tires, instead of an eight out of 10, I would give it a 10. The seat, instead of five out of 10, with this new seat, I would give it a 10. Um, comfort, instead of eight out of 10, I would give it a 10. Um, in terms of, uh, some of these other criteria. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, aesthetics, I would actually go almost to an 11 because they look better than the Badger tires, to be honest. Terrain, you know, I give dirt an eight. With the Badgers, I give it a nine, or excuse me, with the all-terrain, I give it a nine. Water's probably the same. Mulch, bark. When I had my all-terrains, I went from a seven out of 10 to like a nine out of 10. Much better carbon capabilities, much better. Rocks, I would give an eight instead of a six. Grass, I would give a nine instead of six. So much better with the all-terrains and grass. And then everything else kind of stays the same. Oh, but overall traction, instead of a seven out of 10, I would give it a nine. So you can see that with those changes and the little fuzzy math I did here, I go from an 8.12 to an 8.93. So overall, love the bike. Would definitely recommend it. It's badass looking. It's comfortable all day long. You can go anywhere, but you make some small changes, a seat and some new tires for about 200 bucks. And you're already spending 25, 28, 3,000 on this bike, depends on the, the discount. It's worth 200 bucks to get those changes. And then also throw in a mirror, this N-Track mirror, E-N-T-R-A-C, N-Track. It's really good. Don't get the Hafni, H-A-F-N-Y. It broke on me, it's really crappy. Get the N-Track mirror, it's really wide. You can see over your shoulder. It's great. Um, those changes, you know, the tires, the seat, and the, the, the mirror, you're rocking all day long. It's almost a 90 out of 100 or a 9 out of 10. So, anyway, I hope this helped you. Any questions, any specific questions, you can certainly ask me in comments. I'll try to get back to you. Um, take a look at some of my other videos because I go in depth into a lot of these areas. And uh, I hope this helps you out. God bless. Peace out. Don't forget to subscribe. I feel like, you know, this is a really good review. Hope you guys got a lot out of it, and I'd love to get some more subscribers. I'm at 126. I'd love to get up to 200. I'd be freaking ecstatic, elated. So anyway, like, subscribe. God bless. Peace out. Have a good day. Hope you enjoyed.